If you missed last week's video, our family of four left our RV in Tennessee to travel to Nairobi, Kenya. Now, when you think of Kenya and you think of Africa, one of the things you think of is wildlife. And today, we're gonna show you not just any wildlife, but we get up close and personal with a rhino. Really up close and personal with a rhino. And we're also gonna show you the last two remaining northern white rhinos on Earth. And they're both females. And so this is a humbling and yet inspirational experience you'll never forget. But first, we've got a special experience for you because we're going into the heart of Kenya to visit the homes of three local Kenyan families. And we're gonna show you where they live, what they eat, how they provide for themselves, and we'll also give you an experience that, to my knowledge, is rarely, if ever, shown on YouTube, and that's the Maasai Tribal Welcome and Tour of their village. And this isn't a tour stop on the side of the road. It's their actual home that took us hours to reach by dirt roads. Are you ready for an unbelievable adventure? Join us as we live a life of less junk, more journey. So we made it to Meru. I think it ended up taking us like um, eight hours once you count all the stops and everything, but totally different than <laughs> being in the city with five million people of Nairobi. We're here to see Travis's childhood friend. Um, we're at his childhood friend's parents' house. This is definitely different than being in Nairobi. Bananas. Those bananas are clean though. Oh, they got banana trees like in their backyard. It's beautiful. Look at that. A lot of bananas. This is just like their backyard. They got about an acre. And they, you know, they pick and eat what they need for themselves and then they take what they don't need and they Sell it. Oh, uh, avocado tree? Yeah. Oh, right here? Yeah. Chili peppers. It's like collard greens. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. As well as it's a huge one. It goes to be avocados. Yeah, you see them up there, Red? Yeah. They're, right there? They're huge. Yeah. This is an avocado seed over here. That's how big they get. Look at that. You can make some really good guacamole. I hate I bet if you get two liters out of it. Are they like this oh. big? Two liters out of it? I love my tacos, so that would be amazing. A little background on Travis and Lauren. They both grew up as missionaries in Africa. Lauren grew up on the west side of Kenya and Travis grew up here in Meru. They met later in life at college and their parents kind of introduced them. It's a beautiful love story that they both have this heart for for Africa and for Kenya and the people and it's part of their their upbringing and just where their heart lies. <laughs> Go that sheep. You're taking picture of of the sheep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, those are sheep. Those are the goats. Hi goat. Hey, do you want to see the sheep? Chickens. Those are chickens. And this one. Let see the cow. Smile is the universal language. Chasing each other and playing, it's just such a beautiful and inspirational thing to see. This is a Kenya ladder. This actually makes a lot of sense. I've fallen off a lot of regular ladders. Way more stable. Well, is this in the Meru market? We're gonna stop and walk around. <laughs> We ran out of time today, I think. And they have welcomed us over for tea and dinner. And so this has just been one of the coolest experiences, hearing their stories and tasting the foods and the architecture and just really getting to know a culture and learn more about them. And something that was said today during tea, he said, in Kenya, we leave room in our schedules. We leave flexibility because it's like it could be an hour, could be two hours but they leave that flexibility, he said, for community. And I think in our culture, sometimes it's like fast, fast, fast. We gotta get from point A to point B. And we see that in our lives so much is like there's not as much time left to slow down and connect. And that's what we've tried to do in the RV life. So we have more time to connect and sit around campfires and learn about people and learn about their, their background and their culture. And that's how we connect. That's how we grow as people. So when you visit families in Kenya, which Travis lived here for like 10 years, they consider you family. Like they literally have pictures of them together and with Travis's family here. And they said they consider us family too and we could come back and live with them. So <laughs> these families that are hosting us, like they literally took off from work just to host us. Just really makes you think, you know, priorities. 
Now what is in the U.S., you know? Whichever one looks the best to you. The kids have not yet had that? No. I, I don't think I've ever had this either. I mean, we've had a lot of sugar in our life, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time that is good. Oh, first time for the yeah. first time that is good. But if you see what I'm doing wrong, if I watch you, I should have watched you closer. Let me get that. All right, so I just chew it. Yeah. You don't have to bite it. Yeah, there you go. I feel like this goat over here. <laughs> no, you look better than the goat. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got a splinter in my mouth. That's crazy. You'll find the difference? I haven't tasted this, so this is towards the top. Yeah. Wow, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Same can, different place. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like low sugar versus... <laughs> it's like celery versus... Uh... <laughs> it's like when you get a diet drink versus a real drink. It's good to know that screen time is universal. where Makina Industries and one of the things Flint Global does is they're looking for ways that they can partner do co-ops or work with people who are already making arts and crafts, home goods, um, all kinds of different things here in the country and then they make them here in Africa and then they're shipping them to the United States. They're not working with this company yet. Very interesting to see um, how these rugs are made here at Makina Industries. The Kenyans are producing things ethically here in Kenya and then they're reselling these things online in the United States. So this is where it starts. Yeah. Oh. First, I prepare this wool by these things. So, so this is one, one ply, one ply, two ply, one ply, and then you make it two ply down here. Yes. Okay. After that, it's going to be like this. Then it will be washed. The washed ones will be like this. Also, we make the. We, after that, we. Weave. Oh, here's the weaving. Wow. Okay, and this is the last step here. And what does she do in the final touches? Is she just cutting out? She is removing the, this one and then oh, cutting. So like that? So okay. that it can be smooth. smooth. Making it smooth Removing like the thorns mm. in it because okay. the, the sheep stays in the bush. Mm. Now we go there. There are some little thorns. Oh yeah, and that's the final? Yeah, this is ready now. It's nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Put your hand here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. This is the last step. Yeah, we'll find the Beautiful. They said it's about a two week process from the time they start and they dye it and they dry it and they have a finished product. It's a beautiful brown one. A big one? Mm. Okay, a big brown one? That's beautiful. I was going to swim today. You have a really nice pool that. <laughs> this is beautiful though. So the plan today, we're heading about two hours. Nainuki? What he said. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> they still have Paw Patrol in Africa, guys? This video is really about us just connecting with the culture and connecting with the locals and seeing things from more than just a tourist perspective. Because when you come into somewhere, it's like this in the United States too, when you come into somewhere as a tourist and you only do the tourist things, you don't necessarily see the real culture and the real value and the real people underneath the set, scheduled, planned activities. And there's a time for that. There's nothing wrong with that. The opportunities we have by being with Travis and with Flint Global to go into these homes, it's really just been life changing. And maybe you can be thinking about as you connect with people and as you look for these opportunities, you never know. We didn't know when we connect with Travis. We didn't know we connect with this team and these people here locally. Who knows? In five years, we might be back. We might just come directly and connect with some of these locals and per you just don't know. You just keep putting yourself out there. Oh, wow. Is this happening? Are right, you ready? I'm so ready. This is fun. <laughs> You're really hot off the, the ground. Adventure mobile. <laughs> Travis is saying elephants just hang out down here sometimes and they cross from the national park, cross over to this side. Hey buddy. This has got to pee on the side of the road. Is this a lot of wheat fields that was owned by the British? It's interesting, and this is like this in the States too. Like you, you think of a state or a country or an area or a continent, 
you have a picture in your mind of what something's like. Then you get there and you're like, wheat fields. <laughs> and check out this on the other side. So on the other side, it goes down on the other side of Meru where we came from. And that's where a lot of your wildlife is at. And then I think we've got a safari coming up. Oh, Mount Kenya's right there behind the clouds? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're about, what, seven or 8,000 feet up right now, probably, I guess? That's our elevation right now. And he said we're going higher than that. So a lot of this land up top is owned by Brits who colonized this area. And they just continue to pass it down to their families. So you're going to see a lot of wheat fields, a lot of greenhouses, a lot of agriculture that's income producing up at the top of close to where Mount Kenya is at. Come on out. This pool's usually full. We have a crate of cokes sitting down in the it's ice cold oh, water coming out of the mountain. Okay. And then they pull it up when the cokes are You pull it up? The cokes come up? Right now it's empty. But usually, see the crate? Yeah, I see it. Oh, that's awesome. There's a whole other level up there. Wow. It's uh, okay. Fun. I've never eaten in a treehouse before over a trout farm. So we got trout cake. I like. I will. Just kidding. Trout pizza. I don't dislike it. Trout rigatoni. Rigatoni. And I'm not going to. It's a trout farm underneath the tree. <laughs> That's a no shortage of trout. You gonna try it first? Am I gonna try it? Is this the sugar cane? Sugar cane? Can get sweet. That's good. Is okay. there ginger in it? Yeah, there's ginger in it. Yes, I did. Woo. Yeah, you can taste the ginger. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's it. That's fish, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> try it. Can... Try it? Yeah. How do I try it? Pinch it? I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> Meat on the bone. Yeah. I'm staring in the eyes. <laughs> oh, it's a whole fish. <laughs> I had one pumpkin. Oh, you had oh, we had three. What'd you get? What? She said coriander. Yeah. Coriander trout. She talked me into it. Trout pizza. Trout pizza. Which was a mistake. Because it has olives. On yes. It. There are chunks of trout. I'm gonna have to try this. My pizza. The trout's good. Is it? That is very different. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's go see what we can find, buddy. Come on. Oh, there they are. They're right there. See them? Wild monkey. Right there, yeah. See, I have never seen a wild monkey before. Well, there you go. Look, he's right here. Look how close he is. He has a rod on him. So this experience is kind of the flip side of what we showed in the last couple of days. Um, hey, buddy. This is a very up-and-coming town. And they have an airport. They have a small airport. But a lot of people flying here because it's very close to where the safaris are at. And... This is one of the restaurants that the safari tours come to. So the prices are also very American. <laughs> so what, getting a burger here is about what you pay in America. Hi. You say, you say hi? I might hide you. What? You're so sneaky. But once you leave and you go, even the really nice restaurants that aren't touristy, I mean, you're talking like probably almost half what we pay in America for a lot of the meals. Really, really nice, well done. It's amazing what you get for the money once you get away from the touristy stuff. If you've watched our channel before, you know that I'm very big on shorts. <laughs> like I love my shorts. I hardly ever wear anything but shorts. But however, in Kenya, it's way more socially accepted to wear pants. They, they joke, you know, you look like a little boy if you're wearing shorts. Tourists and uh, younger kids wear shorts. Adults and real men around here wear pants. So we go to somebody's home or we go to a village, you know, I put my pants on. I did, I did bring pants. I know we're going somewhere like this or like a travel day. I'm still going with the shorts. Like literally, it was right over our heads. Yeah, it was like on that small branch, Daddy. Yeah, that was amazing. They're swinging from tree to tree over here. That is so cool. I mean, these are cute, but you do not want them to mess with you. Like they can, they got claws. <laughs> oh, we were really close to them. I'm sure they never mess with you, though. You're loving these monkeys. I am. I love this so much. So I'm at a grocery store, and this Nutella has security on it. There are no regular pretzels. They're all different flavors. That's all they have. They have a like jalapeno and tomato and barbecue.
This is a farm owned by an individual who I think he maybe owns a helicopter business or something like that too. But um, he has multiple places you can stay on here. I think maybe 16 places you can stay, uh, which is what we're walking to right now. Big thing we're here for. Hopefully I'll be just able to show you um, either tonight or in the morning. Are we three? Are we three? Mm -hmm. I hope. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Whoa! What we got? Give me the tour. Three beds. Everybody gets their own bed. Me, I get this one. JJ. Turns out JJ kicks nonstop during the night. Oh my we goodness. We shared a bed with him for the past <laughs> few nights and you are performing the circus in your sleep. Now you believe me. Oh, yeah. there's more rooms? Oh, wow. You can make coffee in here too, by wow. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's so cute. Oh, look at the open shower. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. We got a fence. Yeah, you can look outside. So, this is Mount. Kenya. We are currently in about 8,000 feet in elevation. Mount Kenya, over 17,000 feet in elevation. I think 17,057 feet. It's the second tallest mountain peak in all of the continent of Africa. Only behind, I think, Kilimanjaro, which I think, don't quote me, maybe I'll put it on the screen. I think it's like, Kilimanjaro is like over 20,000 feet. It is, it is tall and it is massive, but this is massive too. And it is gorgeous. Oh, and it's a dormant volcano. So it's pretty cool too. But today, is all about taking a safari, right, Hensley? Yep. You ready? Um, so we're taking a journey. Safari means journey. journey in Swahili. We're going on a journey. Can I take a picture? Yep. Less junk, more journey, right? Okay, let's take a picture. Get a safari. So Mount Kenya's that way. Conservancy's that way. Walking right in front of Mount Kenya. Oh, right there, right there. Right there, I see his face. Hey, buddy. See the baby riding on the back right there? Yeah, it's underneath. Hold this. Oh! Check out this urinal. I was really confused. So you just... I guess you pee on the wall. Over here on the left. It's a lot of zebras. What's up, buddy? Zebras are that animal to me that I think shows God's sense of humor. This is spectacular. Just seeing this in real life. It's just beautiful. Wow. So the northern white rhino is the most critically endangered species of rhino on earth. So Sudan is died in 2018. Sunni died in 2014. These are the only two still alive. Fatu and Najin. How does that make you feel, Hensley? Makes me feel sad. Makes you feel sad? Because they can't breed. Yeah. So this is the rhino cemetery. Are these all black rhinos and northern white rhinos? Is that the two or is there others? I think it's only black rhinos. Only black rhinos in its back? Yeah. Okay. To get a white rhino it's hard because it's lying on the flat place. So ledger will detect you. But for the black rhino they stay in the thicket. So when the poachers come it's easy to get black rhino more than uh, white rhino. What happens is they pay locals sometimes as little as like 300 bucks to poach these rhinos, but 300 bucks changes a local's life. Um, and then that, what they poach the horns primarily and they take them and then they sell them and they illegally export them. And that's what the big money's at is when they sell what the parts they pulled off and they poach. Here's Sudan's tombstone. It's the last male Northern white rhino on earth. Died in 2018. Somehow we kept rotating, rotating around and we, so every kid we have <laughs> group is now in this one dude. This is the kid mobile. Is this the kid mobile? Yeah. Yep. And we got the two girls up front. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a great example, and this applies in the United States as well, but as you travel, you can find ways to connect with locals. The experience you have 
is amazing because we're, we're here and we're we're seeing we're, you know we're seeing the safaris that people have booked and usually people will book and they take you straight from the hotel to the safari to the restaurant to wherever you're supposed to go you're herding around a little bit but without someone to know what you can and can't do that's the experience sometimes you need to do but we've been able to have a very different experience at our own pace and saving money because Travis is driving. We've been booking our own places and going at our own pace. It's just a totally different experience. Even the tours see things. I didn't even know it's what we're walking toward. <laughs> a very angry black blind rider. Oh, wow. Did you... Where did we put it? Uh, I want to save the rhinos. Think he's dreaming? Did he twitch? That's what you look like when you're dreaming. The Bronco, which means blessing in Swahili, was uh, born here on the conservancy. So he lost one eye in a fight and the other eye to disease. So he's, he's blind, he doesn't have... Any eyes? Yeah, he doesn't have an eye on this side. But the other side, if you walk around, you'll see he does have an eye, but the eye doesn't work because of disease. So that he can't train with the other eye, which is the next one. There you go, he's like, yeah. You will not bite him. I'm done now. Die! Die! Yeah. She's so cool. She's tearing up. Wow. And she's trying to find something. It is so amazing. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> we just fed a rhino. I, I just. Like I at first we walk up and we're like, I've never been this close to a rhino. And then he walks up with the, whatever we're feeding the rhino. And it was like being that close to something so powerful. You can just feel it. You can feel the force on this thing. Look at that hippo. It seriously does look That's what they do. If the boy opens the mouth, the mouth will wait. That means I don't have the pool. That's as close as you're ever going to get to a hippo mouth. This is what is there for killing. Have a feel. Wow. Yeah. Look, I'm going to open the mouth. This is a hippo. Ready? Look how big that hippo. What are we going to go see, James? We're going to see some endangered white rhinos. The northern white rhino. Yes. How many are left in the world? Two. So my name is Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Jacob. Nice to meet you. Thank I'm you. among the guys who take care of them. Thank you so much. We won't get him. We drive in to see them. Okay. Very wow. good. Very good. Is everybody ready? Yeah. There were only five spots. We had to arm wrestle the boys and. <laughs> 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 the girls won, except oh, Oliver. Oliver was the only one that arm won the arm wrestling <laughs> match, right? So guys, we'll come out. You can, okay. We are going to see Nanjin and Fatu. Nanjin is the mom. She is 33 years old. Fatu, her daughter, 23 years old. These were the males. These are the females that we are going to see. But unfortunately, we lost all the males. Oh. I came here with a private car, with guests like you. When I'm feeding them with food, one mama, I don't know what happened. Hello on the of the car of the car. Something saying, no, 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 no. They came straight where I was. Oh. They knocked me down. That one injured me. Sorry. See? So that's why we don't want any kind of unfamiliar sound from, from them. Well, Take care of your hand, wash up your hand. Hey. Don't do that, please. Why, why? Who's a big on Tabadale? Hey, Mondo, when I talk on the big guy, could be kitchen is I. Don't do that, please. Very good, very good. <laughs> Very good. That's amazing. That was an incredible experience. Incredible that you can 
get that close feed you can like feel their breath on your hand when you're yeah. feeding them the carrot you can feel them sniffing and like breathe on, my face. breathe on you yeah that was um that was quite the experience wow was that cool yes yeah, so cool so right now, because there are only two left and they're two females, they're actually working on a surrogacy experiment. And it worked. They tried it the first time and it did work on their surrogate. But unfortunately, she got a disease and passed away. But she was pregnant for three months. So they know that the surrogacy is going to work. So they have all the supplies they need. <laughs> to make another baby and so um as soon as she's ready which they're gonna know from another male that they have um they have gave a vasectomy to when he lets them know she's ready they're gonna try again so we're gonna check out the surrogate yeah the surrogate Hensley, they want that female to carry the baby why are they using those girls and not the okay so because unfortunately the two females left they're not able to get pregnant they're not able to carry babies we remember that video the rhino being on blanketed. ace ventura i don't know if that counts <laughs> you have rhino slobber on you i have rhino slobber <laughs> on my, my <laughs> thumb you never know what you're gonna find around here <laughs> it's always a surprise yeah. the line is off road and you're not supposed to go off road here so we're gonna take a ranger with us i said if we take the ranger with us we can go Oh my goodness. <laughs> that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing. Still, I'm blushing. I still don't know what to say. <laughs> I feel like, um, I need a rest after that. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. I cannot believe we just saw a crowd of lions out in the wild. We're at the equator? Yeah. Yeah, we could do it in here. You said it was better. Wow, you're amazing. <laughs> Show them your burn first before we give context on this. Oh, is it that bad? Yeah. I've, I forgot this spot. The sun here is pretty intense. We're about to show you why. Well, girl. We've made it to the equator. <laughs> That's wild. Latitude zero, zero, zero. What's latitude? Latitude is side to side. Longitude is up and down. And as far as side to side, we're dead center of the world right You're now. In the, you know the line on the globe that goes around the middle? This is the equator. You're standing at it. Continental Divide, we've done that several times. Equator, never. Did not know that. Always. 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. See what they did? See the line? Here's the... That's why they put this here. It goes straight that way. So today we're traveling about two hours um, to go see the Maasai tribe. Now, if you've never heard of the Maasai tribe, they're probably the most well-known tribe in Africa. I don't know about you, but when I hear tribe, I think really probably a lot of what you think about when you, if you're Googling right now Maasai, a lot of what you think about the Maasai, you think about all the tribes like that. Well, they're not. The tribes are really just groups of people who have certain traditions and ways of doing things and a heritage. So you have some tribes are known for being fishermen. They're next to the coast. Some tribes are known to be farmers. Some tribes like the Maasai are known to be fierce warriors um, and, and cattle herders. And each one of those tribes has its own language. <laughs> so there are 40 plus languages from all these different tribes in Kenya. And so when you think of Kenya and you think of the language, you think of Swahili. And Swahili is the language they came up with for everyone <laughs> to have a shared language because they did not want to give up their tribal language that they had for hundreds of years. The majority of Kenyans know their tribal language and they know Swahili. And then there's a lot of Kenyans, a lot, who also know English. So you're talking like a minimum of three languages for a lot of people. But the Maasai tribe, very traditional. They have their own language. They have their own culture. They're in a more rural area and they've really held on to their traditions and cultures more 
so than many of the other tribes. Travis grew up here, and he's like, I don't know how to get there. They, we literally have somebody from this tribe coming and I think guiding us on these dirt slash mud. It's going to be an experience today, and it's definitely going to be unlike anything I know I've ever seen or experienced in my life. That is a great way to start your day. Thank you. We made our bed too. I'm busy getting kids ready <laughs> while you're out there filming. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I'm actually wearing pants today. So the Lion King movie, which we all know about, was based off the land in this area. It was the inspiration. It's that beautiful, <laughs> the most beautiful area. So there's still a lot of tension here between the Maasai and the land they lost when Great Britain came here because Great Britain came, you know, in the early 1900s, late 1800s and took the land. And then they earned their independence in the mid 1960s and took the land back, Kenya did, but the land that was taken by Britain was not given back to the Maasai. So they're still fighting to get their land back. But it's more of a political battle than a battle against Britain. Oh, a telephone pole's down. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll take us off. It's touch and go. Yeah, no yeah. touch. We're on the bus side now. It's cool. Just my happy place with the mountains and the sunshine and the air and the animals and culture. You have bugs all over you, just so you know. <laughs> it looks good on you. <laughs> Wow. wow, yeah, they're coming out. Yeah. Look at this view up here, Mount Kenya. Wow. So they are very excited to show us their culture. We're excited to see their culture. So. Yes. And they want us to share their culture with the world. So this is just a peek into, into their world. And... Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Mandela. Hello, Nathan. Hi, hi. Hello. It's Mandela. What's that? Hello, JJ. Hi. What's your name? Can you tell me? JJ. Yeah, JJ. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, all of you. Feel free to dance. <laughs> Even ask any question. <laughs> so, Paribuni Sana, welcome. So, so, in Maasai, daytime, everyone is busy, especially warriors who are looking after cattle. That's why you see cattle here. Those young boys who are dancing there, after the song, they go and look after cattle. Everyone is busy. Ladies, they go to fresh water and collect fire. So they're welcoming us to their village. So they've built this wall, this is where they live, around the edge, and that's the outer wall. And then they've got an inner wall where they keep the animals at night, um, away from the wild animals that could come in. And then they're about to show us their home. Okay, I'm coming in. Okay, thank you. This is uh, the skin of the cow, so you see? The skin of the, uh, of the animal is the, um, our mattress. Yeah. It's a cow skin for the mattress. Yeah. The fire has to go at night. Yeah, at night. Calabash. Calabash. Yeah. It's just making it to be... When you put the milk there, it stays for long without 
going back. Oh, okay. Then you use a olive tree. This is a low olive tree for oh. cleaning it. Uh, the purpose is a wood from the bush. Wow. But it's a sharp tree. Wow. Sometimes we use another tree, we call it Kumifora Africana, to make the calabash. And the purpose of the calabash is for making the cut. Okay. That's why there is some handle here. Yeah. This mother is cleaning the calabash using the African olive. Uh -huh. And then after cleaning, the calabash will store milk like five to seven days fresh. Okay, wow. Yeah. Let me shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> like this, like this. Look, JJ, like this. There you go. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Very good. This is what they make? Yeah, these are the items and the jewelry and the wow. things that they make. Yeah. To sell. Okay. This is the work of the thing and then we met. Sell the animals. Yeah. yeah. What's your rhino's name? Did you name it? Uh, no, my sister did. She did? What'd you name it? Hindi. Hindi? Mm -hmm. How'd she put it on? Did she do it oh, like God. this? Like this. So, I think the silver's pretty. It's one of the main things we talked about in the home was just how hard it's been with their culture. And then that constant tug. And you'll see, I, I took a shot of the inner circle where they have their traditional fence. Just a few days ago, they, a leopard got in and killed some of their animals. It's that they, they came in and they had someone put in a metal fence, which is totally new for them to use. The new fence was a tough call for them, but it protects their animals and it protects the leopards too, so they don't have to kill the leopard. Really, if you think about it, it's, it's a constant battle for anybody with your traditions, whether it's traditions um, <laughs> from your family or traditions from your nation. Um, but they're definitely being intentional about it and preserving everything they can. I hear singing up here. Maybe 100% clear, we have never been anywhere in our entire life as welcoming as Kenya. Like it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, they are so thrilled to see you here. Not only that, they say, hey, when are you coming back and when are you gonna bring some more people? They love welcoming people. Like that's such an honor to them. We're at the Masa Women's Group, and Masa Tribe is known for their beadwork, for their beautiful jewelry, as you see. Like, that's the skill they've had for many generations. So they had the idea to help them get the word out is to create jewelry that could be sold in the U.S. So Flint has partnered with Jamani, which we showed in uh, Nairobi as well. But another avenue is they are reaching out to the Masa Village, and these women are creating beautiful work using their skill to create more income to help them have income to feed their family. So this is just a beautiful thing to see. I think that's the hardest part for the people here in Kenya is they have these amazing skills, but just getting the marketing, getting the word out about um, the work that they're doing. So that's how Flint is trying to, to help them elevate that. So these bracelets are not yet ready for sale, but they are working on it. And if you're interested in keeping up with when they're available for sale, you can go to JamaniCollections.com. You can just follow them on social media from their website. It's our last stop of the day, and we thought we were remote. <laughs> What you saw was a glimpse of like another hour of remoteness. But look at this, look at this view. We went to Joseph's house, he's who's been hosting us. He's a part of the Maasai tribe, but look at this view he has from his place. Okay, I'm signing off. We're gonna hang out with Joseph, his family. Till, uh, till next time, we'll catch you guys later. JJ! Bye! Cheese! I'm a, I'm a labor and delivery nurse. Okay. I can come help. <laughs> <laughs>